Hi, I'm Bran, and I love Christmas in July and whatever the heck this is. I'm Dan, and I despise Christmas in July and whatever the heck this is. I'm Alonzo and Holly Goodfellow. <laughs> and and this, this is the Deck the Hallmark Podcast. Deck the Hallmark, it's this podcast. Brandon and friends host this podcast. We hope you like this jolly podcast. Oh, I boy. Am, I am still waiting on the long cut of all of Alonzo's intros. <laughs> but that has to be in there somewhere. It has to be. It For has to be. Sure. Um, oh, well, first of all, happy uh, Christmas in July, Alonzo. Thank happy you for Christmas joining us to July. kick off Christmas in July. And I know you can see it, but the people that are watching us on Philo can also mm-hmm. see our Christmas in July sets that yeah. is decorated. You'll be able to see it in all of its glory to, on tomorrow's episode. Uh, when we don't have a guest and you get to see the full the full thing. Full Monty. Um, but this is, and this is not a joke. Not a joke. This is Balsam Hill stuff. Yes. This, yes, is, this is. is This is what we've been looking at this is the real since deal. we started this podcast. Mm-hmm. And, you know, every other Hallmark movie, you see the, the Balsam Hill logo pop up in the bag, and they're like, this is amazing. That's what happened here as we were setting up for uh, Christmas in July. And it was wonderful. I got to be honest. We opened the boxes, and I was like, this stuff is too good for us. Yeah. Um, they gave <laughs> us gloves to assemble the tree. Gloves. <laughs> Wow. Um, the tree, I'm a real tree boy. This tree looks real. Not it's anymore. You're not. You're a balsam hill boy, I baby. am. I really am. I would get one of these in a heartbeat. Right, and over. apparently 50, up to 50% off at the Christmas in July sale. Christmas in July sale. And then I these love candles. It. If you want it to smell like this Christmas, is... I, once again, I, blown away. I didn't even know they did this. candles. I didn't know they I mean, had oh, candles. They, I didn't know that either. This, yeah, it looks yeah. like a tree, Alonzo. Look at that. And you pop, okay. pop and it pop, off. Pop, boom, and it boom. smells all piney. Oh, piney, yes. You, you don't even have to it. light it. We haven't even lit we haven't it yet. Lit it. We just take the tops off. Nice. It's... <laughs> I look forward to, uh, in the middle of a review, somebody getting up with a remote control and, you know, like showing off all the different facets of the Balsam Hill tree. It's oh, going to be what happened. Just wait for the Bramble Fest. It's going to be into the action as though, like, it were part of a conversation. That's right. <laughs> wait for Bramble Fest. And Any, we, if we say, ta- everybody take your tops off in the future, we're talking about the candles. Yeah, that's exactly. Very clear. I don't, <laughs> Let's be very clear. Yeah, we are not we doing a anything, thing here. We're not saying more from Brandon, for the, sure. The ornaments on the table? Goodness yeah, gracious. I mean. It's the, wonderful. It feels like a winter wonderland in here. And to say that I'm absolutely giddy would be an understatement. I've been insufferable. Yes, you have been insufferable. I un- I acknowledge it. Yeah, I know where my weaknesses are, <laughs> for sure. But my weaknesses is also my strength. In Jesus, the, the set now looks like the inside of Brand's brain. That's yes, part. it that's does. The here. inside of my brain is Balsam Hills Even website this garland. <laughs> like that is garland for you. Like that is, yeah, it is. really nice yeah, really gar- nice like, garland. Every the, the, all the little touches that they have. Yeah, I think. Gorgeous. Speaking of all the little touches, let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about all the little touches. How you doing? All the nuances that uh, you can find in Christmas at Holly Lodge, and I will yeah. say this is uh, one that you need to see to believe. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to do it justice, yeah. but I will try the best that I can. Christmas at Hall, the Holly Hotel originally aired uh, on the world's wide web. <laughs> it aired on the world. <laughs> um, at streaming, sir. I believe it was to be first, and then it went uh, spread like wildfire. Nobody wants credit. <laughs> Nobody. <for it. laughs> <laughs> that was not a fire. It wouldn't this mean to me. Just burn it down, man. Yeah. I don't even know what. Uh, you know. I don't know where this movie came from? We're showing it, but I, it's yeah. not. I, don't look no, at it. November twenty seventh, twenty twenty two, and I went a little something like this. Um, okay, I. It's not often that I start off by explaining <laughs> the production company's <laughs> logos. <laughs> But the, we're making one. The, we are making one. The opening of this movie to show off the production company that created it, which is, and I do want to make sure I J-R-P? put it out there, JPR, JPR Studios. Got it. It's the weirdest production thing I've ever seen, and I absolutely loved it. We got to see a lot of Al Borland in it. <laughs> um, so we uh, start by following a guy down a street with some truly awful credits popping up uh new times roman or something similar and he walks into the historic holly hotel yes. 
We then see the Holly Hotel, the historic one, of course, for quite some time. Every nook and cranny of it, we see it as we find out who is a part of this movie. Cut to New York City. It's December 20th, and we meet Kathy, who is a food critic hanging out with her friend. And she's talking about, you know, how she might, she's up for like a New York Times food critic gig and all this stuff. Her mom calls her and says, hey, I would like you to come home for Christmas. And so she does. She immediately gets pulled over by a hunky hunk cop named Matthew. And she uh, gets a ticket after... A very long time. A very long, very long time of going back and forth about the fact that she was going 51 and a 25, and maybe I could let you... How, how, how fast, Brent? 51 and a 25. It's 51 and a 25. It's 51 and a 25. 51 and a 25. 51 and a 25. 25. It's 51 and a 25. I don't know what you want. Um, so uh, she does get a ticket, and um, then goes to meet her parents at the Holly Hotel, which they run, I guess. Um, they used to live in D.C. Dad was a congressman. Senator. Um, Senator. While Kathy is in town, she agrees to give tours of the hotel, and Officer Matthew is on that tour with his grandma. <laughs> grandma convinces them to go on a date because he's hot. Um, but he stands her up. Police business. People are going 51 and 25. 51 <laughs> in a 25. 51 exactly. in a 25? 51 in a 25. That's why in we're this here. economy? Her parents tell her to give him another chance, so she does, and they go on a date, a montage of a date that looks like also it could be footage from, like, a medicine, like prescription. <laughs> yes. Like, talk to your doctor about this. Morales. Uh, effects include. Yes. But uh, so they, they do this. They go. They're shopping. There's coffee. There's ice sculpting. Um, he goes then. They end up going to the chief of police. Because I don't know if you know this, she got a ticket, 51 and 25. 51 in a 25. 51 and a 25. In a 25. Yeah. The chief of police rips up that citation. Merry Christmas. Um, then they go and they eat some food, and he talks about how he wants to be a good husband and a dad one day and hold his wife's hand as they watch the kids open Christmas presents on Christmas Day. This is the first date, people. And uh, she then all of a sudden is just kind of like, ah, I, we can't. This is bad news. I got New York. I got the New York Times. Um, I'm a New York girl. I'm but not going to be here forever. should she get in the kitchen I mean, instead of being the editor of the New yeah. York Times, shouldn't she just get in the kitchen? They though, do. They do uh, p- kind of say that that over and instead over of again. instead of critiquing food, she should be in the kitchen making. Food. That's right. Um, suddenly, and this is maybe halfway through the movie, we see these two ghosts uh, plotting to get Kathy and Matthew to end up together. And uh, that's going to be good, I think, for us. Uh, so they end up going out again, horse and carriage and all that stuff. It's great. And he's like, can you just do me a favor? Don't think. Just do. Like, just do. Like, it's like a whole Yoda thing. And she uh, gets a call on Christmas Day. <laughs> That the New York Times <laughs> needs her to go and cover the opening it. of a new restaurant. She gets a call from her boss on Christmas Day. No, oh, from the New York Times saying she got the she job. She got the job. Yeah. Here's your first assignment. And it's B. tonight. That's right. A restaurant's opening up. On Christmas night. Mm-hmm. On Christmas night. Now, this is bad because she's supposed to be in the kitchen. She is supposed to be in the kitchen. The, they, they, have a, they have a big dinner happening at the Holly Hotel. Don't ask we all don't the information. All the we don't know. We don't know no, all the guests. We don't. We don't. But it's a big one. It's a big deal. And the uh, regular chef, she's gone. Yeah. She had a scene, and she she deuced out early. Deuced out um, early. And so what are we going to do? You were supposed to do it, but she's like, I'm sorry. This is my dream job. I got to go. And so dad have a, has a conversation with a ghost. It's a whole thing. Um, but he does. Matthew stops her. Red li- the lights. The, the police yeah. in, her, in, in the police car. That's right. Says, hey, I had to stop you. 
are you sure about this? And she's like, yeah, I'm sure about it, Matthew. <laughs> Shove off, bud. We, we then see a plane. We then see an airport. We then see a plane in the air. We then see New York City. Just keep that right in the old back of the noggin there. Um, cut back to the Holly Hotel, and the kitchen is just like, what are we? What are we gonna do? What uh, uh, grilled cheese? Maybe I don't know. Uh, you know who does know? Kathy. She shows up. Yes, she, she does. decided not to get on that plane. Yeah, she does. <laughs> we saw the plane. We saw New York. She didn't do it. She decided, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to get in the kitchen where I belong, and I am going to cook the best meal ever. And this is good news, because the The president of the United States and the first lady come to dinner at the historic Holly Hotel on Christmas night. How you doing? How How you you doing, doing? everybody? How you doing? How you doing? So it's a good thing they didn't do grilled freaking cheese (laughs) for the president. So... Matthew then comes in and says, you're here. This is amazing. The president then tells everybody, meet me in the bar area. I'm going to read Twas the Night Before Christmas, the classic book you read on On Christmas. Christmas. (laughs) And um, while that's happening, Matthew is like, I love you. Also, he proposes to her. She says yes, they kiss, and that, my friends, was Christmas Christmas at at the the Holly Holly Hotel. Hotel. (laughs) Let's take a break. We'll be right back here on Deck the Hallmark. Deck the Hallmark. We did it. Well, let's get to it, everybody. Christmas at the Holly Hotel, um, a movie. <laughs> we watched it. And the last movie we reviewed, Alonzo said it was a movie, and he would show it to Dave White. So yes. can we get to it? Let's in a find row? out. Let's get to the hot take. Let's kick it to Alonzo. Alonzo, how much did you love this movie? I need a neck brace for the whiplash between these two episodes because we just talked about one of the best films we've ever talked about on this show, uh, uh, Your Christmas or Mine. And now uh, we magically arrive at one of the worst Um and and terrible in a different way than something like Christmas in Carolina. This movie feels like it's... It's this close to being a horror movie, but it's also this close to being like a savage parody of Hallmark movies and what Hallmark movies stand for. Uh, But it's not. It just is trying to be one. Um, And, you know, they have this location, this actual hotel in Michigan where President George H.W. Bush did once visit. Uh, But uh, oucha magoucha, this is just... (laughs) The worst. I mean, <laughs> terrible acting. The writing is embarrassing. Uh, the makeup is badly done. I mean, just, uh, I, I was constantly astonished at how much this movie was topping itself in getting everything wrong. Um, <laughs> terrible from a technical aspect. Terrible from a dramatic aspect. Uh, you name it, this movie drops the ball. Uh, seriously. Holly Goodfellow, I'm going to see you at Bramble Fest, and you're going to explain to me why you thought it was a good idea for us to watch this movie. And if you laugh in my face, there's there's going to be trouble. Oucha magoucha, yeah. he said. I Is there a it. chance that we watch this at Bramble Fest? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, could we take it to the tape, perhaps? I don't know. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe. Hmm. Um, y'all, this is insane. Um, I, I'm I'm constantly amazed at how just... I'm imagining how how easy it must be for people to just put things on real services <laughs> and say, watch it with ads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Amazing. This That's movie this movie is insane. This movie um I felt like we could have shot it better on my iPhone. Um the audio is hilarious uh, there's so much about this movie that is an absolute riot uh it, it cl- just without 
this is a very bad movie. I had an absolute blast. <laughs> I can't wait to watch it again. Just an absolute treasure. This is what this is what it's all about. Last week's movie, it's almost what's more impressive. That or this, I because don't know. it's they're almost both very impressive. they're both very impressive in their own distinct yeah. ways. Yeah. This mm. is really something to behold, and I I I can't wait to watch it again because I know there's stuff that we missed. Oh yeah, there's got to be. Oh, indeed, it's a Layers. treasure trove. Yeah, Dan. Um, there's a scene with the guy and the girl in the horse carriage, and and the uh, our leading dude says, uh, "I'm not so good at talking." <laughs> <laughs> And he's right. <laughs> <laughs> this has to be the weirdest first half of a three-hour Christmas-themed adult film that I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, uh, I kept thinking they were going to start playing some weird yeah. jazz music and things were going to get TVMA in a hurry. It's a very um, specific um, it, line that is Hallmark Christmas parody and pornography. It is. It and is, I do... <laughs> When he pulls like, her over, he's like, you know, I pulled you over. Like, he's leaning over the car, and they have nowhere to be in all day to get there, man. Like, they are just fake badge. It was like, I mean, he doesn't wear undershirts. You feel like it's about to happen. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't. I don't. It is like the creators of this film were in a bunker <laughs> and and came out like in like Brendan Fraser and Bla Bla Blast from the Past and was like, we've never, we're going to make a TV Christmas movie. And they had never heard of anything that had happened before. And they put this on screen. Um, it, guys, every actor in this movie has a moment where you're like, they're trying to remember their line. Not one person, not one person. Every actor in this movie, at some point, the camera is on them, and you can see them rifling through the script in their head to remember their line. Turning. Somebody, so one dude in this movie delivers his line and then gives poses afterwards. Um, the the leading guy in this movie, you know how in Multiplicity, Michael Keaton, you've probably not seen it. No. You might have. Michael Keaton keeps cloning himself so that so that he can get more work done. And every time he clones himself, that person, that version of him becomes a little like Dumber. a little uglier, a little more like not all there in the head. This is like the seventy second clone of Aaron Eckhart. Like this leading guy. <laughs> is like he's just a, like a jawline and it's just somebody's feeding him his lines in his ear. It is tough out there. It is hysterical. There are long, silent pauses in this movie that don't go anywhere. There are montages set. We paid more for the theme song to Yo Gavel Gavel than they paid for this soundtrack. <laughs> um, this is a... Guys, this is an all timer, an all timer as far as bad movies go. I, I uh, virtually unmatched for an eighty five minute movie. Christmas in Carolina was in the seventy minute yeah. range, but for an eighty five minute movie, this is this is a sight to behold. Oh, it's yeah, amazing! Th th this goes into the cellar of Christmas Carolina, and the shovel comes out. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's get to all. <laughs> All the feels. Uh, we were talking about one of this movie gave us those feels. Alonzo? Ice and snow. <laughs> Ice and that, snow. That's that's Ice all I got. and snow. Um, the first scene of this movie, we do get a nice tour of what was a very beautiful... Rest in peace, obviously. Obviously. Uh, according to Wikipedia, after last year's fire, they are planning to reopen in the summer of 2023. Uh, Bramble Fest 2024 at the Holly Hotel. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, th we get a nice tour, uh, and it's all decorated for Christmas, and I like that. Dan? <laughs> Have I mentioned Balsam Hill? Uh, they're they amazing. are an outstanding company. <laughs> this stuff, th these ornaments, all of them. Oh, my You know goodness. a fun fact about the ornaments? I'd love to hear one. They're, uh, n no one is exactly the same. No. Yeah, it's true. I know there's like similar designs, this but apparently, they're, apparently they're, hand, they're handcraft. That's what it oh said, my handcraft. Oh, gosh. So even there's similarities, you similar designs. Will. And right now, up to 50% off of everything on their websites. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. We're going to be right back. And talk about this movie a little bit more here on Tech the, Tech Hallmark. the Hallmark. Hallmark. 
Holly says that at the premiere, the audience was literally laughing out loud. And then she, <laughs> and then she just said something else, which is, uh, uh, they just wrapped the sequel, and it's called A Fireman for Christmas. What? Is that true? It stars the best friend. It stars the best the blonde friend? who waited oh, at the airport. Oh, who stays in New York. Okay. Oh, yeah. We were definitely invested in her. <laughs> yes. Please, more for that. Uh, and Holly, I was teasing. I, I know exactly why you wanted us to watch this movie. And this episode will make it worth it, I suppose. <laughs> Let's get to the wait what. It's where we talk about what in this Never movie. Never mind my pain. <laughs> made us go, wait what? Uh, Alonzo, anything? Can you? No, oh, it's airtight. Yeah, I really got a stretch on this one. But, uh, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the the, uh, the opening logo. I just wrote down weirdest opening credits. Like, all time. So weird. So weird. Like, Zoom. out of order. And, <laughs> and, and, yeah, definitely the font that you didn't have to pay for. It is the, it's the, the fastest I've ever had to rewind a movie. <laughs> <laughs> We're 20 seconds in, and I'm like, Dan, you got to see it, bud. <laughs> I went to grab a drink. He's like, you're missing out. I'm like, no, it no, just no, started. No, no. no you've you got to see all of this. Oh. Um, you know, of all the movies that don't understand how food criticism works, <laughs> this one doesn't understand it the most. Kathy actually says, well, if I give them a mixed review this time. They'll give me a better dinner next time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, that, the, How's that working out? Think for, of the ethical ramifications yeah. of that sentence. Just sit uh, on yeah. it for a and while. Think about it for anything else. Like Michael Bay still hasn't released <laughs> anything. <laughs> I'm waiting. Uh, <laughs> That this cop is right out of a horror movie. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like if that this is not a meat cute, this is a meat creepy, and it just gets <laughs> creepier the more that it goes. So like that's just a nightmare fuel. Um, th- the grandmother thinks that George H. W. Bush was hot. Yeah, that Did was anyone ever. <laughs> I, I don't. It's mm, before my no. time, Alonzo. I mean, I I remember him getting uh, beaten by Bill Clinton when yeah. I was. Eight or nine, uh, yeah. but yeah, I don't remember any of those discussions. Yeah, Dan, Dan Quayle was the hot one. Let's be clear. Wow, <laughs> yeah, those two, I guess. Yeah, man, that uh, if it was those two. If it wasn't for the dang blue wave, I don't know if you caught that in the movie. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and this actually is a perfect segue because the, one of the things about even, you know, ye old Hallmark movies that they were very shrewd about was never getting too specifically political or religious. And this movie gives us a, a guy who uh, – a, a former senator who is displaced from his job by a blue wave – and a police chief with one of those thin blue line flags on his desk. Yeah. And I'm not here yeah. for any of this. So, I didn't see that one. Yeah, the Blue yeah. Lives Matter flag does not know. That, mm. Mm. Yeah, could we not? But no, we did mm. it anyway. Uh, do you want to end your life by destroying your liver of drink every time someone says 51? in? A <laughs> oh, yeah. You're in big trouble. Yeah. If we do this at Bramble Fest, that's the only part of the drinking game. What's amazing Ooh. about their commitment to saying that is I also don't think they realize that that is pretty bad. Yeah, yeah 20 yeah. it's yeah. over double. That's a big one. Yeah. They're just but they just like they keep saying it as a joke. And, and it's, it's like it's, it's not like she did it while there was, you know, ice and snow on the ground. No. You know, that would make it even more uh, of a public threat. But, eh, you know, But whatever. also, you know what always happens around holidays is they stop writing speeding tickets. <laughs> <laughs> they, they say, you know yeah. what? Let's just give everybody the pass. Now's the time. It's the time for No getting. speed traps. They do try to. At Nothing. Least, I guess what they were saying is, is maybe it dropped from 45 to 25 and she was going 51 and then it dropped to 25? I, I don't know. Whatever they needed to say 51 to 25 a thousand times. So many times. <sighs> so many times. Uh, this movie does not earn the right to, uh, A, be meta about how Christmas movies work and talk mm-hmm. about that. No. Uh, nor does it earn ghosts. And no. And we get both of those things. And mm, sorry, movie, no. You have to really build up some goodwill to be allowed those things. Uh, you talked about the bad audio I have have to mention when they're on the carriage ride you can hear wind in the microphone in the microphone 
And a thing I always like to point out about movies like this is that they make you appreciate the things you take for granted in yeah. most other movies. You know, when you see the room, it makes you realize the importance of things like editing and continuity. Uh, and a movie like this makes you realize, yeah, windsock on the microphone, very helpful when you are shooting on location. Well, and also just ADR. Yeah. Like, uh, or for that matter, just yes, exactly. fix it. It's easy. Yeah. Yeah, this was. But I mean, after oof. hearing that the woman sing at the end of the movie down at the bar, you knew that nothing was fixed. Mm, no, nothing. no, 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 no. This is a take one, Joe. <laughs> um, yeah, the 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 again in, in 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 the annals of how journalism doesn't work, that the New York Times is going to call you on Christmas morning yeah. to tell you've got a job, and that you've got to come right back to New York for a restaurant opening happening that night on Christmas. That was the part of no. this movie that I thought, are they parody? Like, is this a parody? Like, is it supposed right. to be Mom, funny? Dad, is this a joke? Like, that is <laughs> legitimately, when that was happening, I was like, they can't possibly believe this is passing any, a legit by any plot point. Yeah. No, no way. Mm -mm. No, this is just, this is what we're doing here. Um if the president was coming, they would all be undergoing massive security checks. Uh, and they, it would not be a last minute reveal to the audience. Like Kathy would know anybody who was going to be in that room would be checked out. Certainly there would not be a last minute change in the chefing of this dinner. Uh, because you know that, yeah, none of the, if you're going to try and make the president happen, yeah, there's, there's just too much do that i i worked at an airport in columbia south carolina and there was a chance the president was coming to visit and we all had like full security everything absolutely everywhere before you could get in the door there's just no world there's no yeah. world where that happens uh i didn't understand why the ghost could hold a drink but not light a cigar <laughs> <laughs> like if they wanted to make him totally ephemeral great but then once he's picking the drink up i'm like eh, bah, 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 bah. i'm sorry you have opposable thumbs this changes everything uh Kathy, we are told throughout the film, is a brilliant chef, and mm -hmm. she, you know, is reticent. You know, it's it's a very kind of Joseph Campbell hero's journey thing. She doesn't want to, you know, embrace her destiny, but eventually she does. She could be like God's gift to uh, to to the kitchen. She could be a James Beard winning Michelin star holding chef. Nobody puts together a perfect Christmas dinner with zero prep time. No, I mean, nothing. No. Like we are we are less than a couple of hours away from this. Nothing's cooking. Nothing's in the oven. Nothing's ready. Nothing's been prepped. Uh, there's no menu. The, the chef is going like, uh, grilled cheese sandwiches. I, I, I'm sorry. Nobody can pull that out of their keister. Not even the great Kathy. Um, the entire president thing is like, what are we doing here? This actor is like, I didn't buy him as the president of the local Kiwanis. <laughs> he says the United States. And I quote, how you doing? Yeah. He, he, I, I, we were watching on a I, loop and I said, this president is offensive. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how. I, I I just know that he is. I don't. President I, Medea is here. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like it was like we've had one person of color in the whole movie say one line and then disappear early in the movie. Mm -hmm. We'll make the president a person of color and have them be like a Medea type character. Yeah. It was absurd. He yeah. said, "How you doing?" <laughs> Over a half dozen oh. times. Walking Not to once. Say, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? No way. Yeah. How it's you doing? It's, it's his thing. People <laughs> people love that about him. President, you know, how you doing? You know, everybody has their, uh, presidents have their slogans, you know, make sure. America great, hope, etc. I feel your pain. Um, yeah. yeah. This is how you doing. <laughs> how you doing? How you doing 2024? <laughs> I, would, I would vote for him. I would. I'm voting for the how you doing guy. Really, how you doing? He sells it. You know. Oh What's your? God. What are you running on? What's your platform? How, how you doing? doing? <laughs> I've sold. I'm in. <laughs> now we've seen a lot of movies where people start um, uh, a visit from Saint Nicholas, aka it was the night before. Christmas. Oh boy! <laughs> uh, and even a few movies where they read the entire <laughs> thing, which they do here. But I, this is the first time I've seen one where they read the entire thing except one line. 
Did you notice the missing line? Well, was the, I know they skipped. I didn't know they if it was one line hard. or I know they skipped a little bit, but not enough. <laughs> The, the his 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 uh his nose like a cherry like that that whole part of it gone weird and i was like I, I, which i wouldn't have minded except that they read the entire, the entire rest thing, of the yeah. poem every last stanza is in there but for some reason we're going to chuck that one it's like i'm sorry you, you you have to commit to one or the other you really you know and then yeah finally at the end this movie started on December 20th and ends on December 25th and has a proposal in it. Yeah. Crazy. So I need to know. Hi, hi, hi. It's crazy. Yeah. And not only did they, did they do the uh, night before Christmas, it's interposed with the proposal. They go back and forth. Which is the best. Yeah. From, you know, the the old romantic story. <laughs> the night President How You Durin reading the right. night before Christmas <laughs> right. and a proposal. That is all time. Wow. And you know That's how you I read Twas the Night Before Christmas. On Christmas night, night. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, I wasn't here last night. I will read this tonight, though. Yeah, it's um, been extended. So you mentioned right out of the gate, you know, that you're in for something special with the opening uh, b- b- production card. But also right out of the gate, she gets into her rental car and the check engine light. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Which I love. I love that. Yeah. I love that. They're like, there's nothing we can so. do. We gotta. We gotta go. <laughs> um. There are so many things that are stated in this movie, lines that just just to tell us about oh, the past, the plot, yeah, the plot, etc. One of my favorites was you moved us from D.C. to this slice of Americana, also known as Holly, Michigan, <laughs> which I just love it. I love that it was said. I love that it was written. I'm a city mouse, not a country mouse. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> which is a fantastic line. Great. Um, there is a, uh, so everybody who's on this ghost tour, or I'm sorry, the hotel tour, where she talks about ghosts basically the whole time. Yeah. The meeting spot is, best I can figure, the surface of the sun. Yeah. That yeah. tree <laughs> is the brightest tree I've ever seen. I'm sitting next to a balsam hill tree. It is beautiful. It's wonderful. It's got a lot of lights on it. Warm. But I can look at it. Yeah. <laughs> that one, if you look at it without glasses you on, you, this this is like a don't look at the sun situation. Just two like, pieces of cardboard with you, a hole in it. it yeah. That's tough. That was the brightest thing I've ever seen. Um, she's talking to Matthew's grandma about the ghost thing. And then he walks up out of nowhere and just says, I believe in ghosts. Which I just thought I got a hoot out of that. He he says a lot of just weird, weird stuff. stuff. So yeah. much weird stuff. I'm in this not movie. so good at talking. I'm not so good at talking. <laughs> uh, the citation that the chief rips up is a blank piece of paper. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you should still go ahead and pay that pay that fine. But I don't think that is actually uh, the fine doing for what. Oh, 51 and a 25. Uh, 51. Right, I don't know if you're 25. Hard. So we've talked a lot about the president. President, how you doing? Uh, and and reading and all that wonderful stuff. He, when Kathy walks in in her dress, he gets out of his seat yeah. and goes absolutely nuts. It is incredible. Kathy, wow, 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 you look good. Wow, oh, y'all see this girl? Yeah. It is a whole shakedown of how good she looks, and it was amazing. It is, uh, it is amazing. His wife's right there for the president of the United States <laughs> to basically be just ogling this woman. Yo, turn up around, and down. give me a, give spin. Me a spin. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel, do you know who Tex Avery is? I do not. Unfortunately, he's one of the original Looney Tunes animators, and he's the guy that would do the wolf with the eyes Ooh, popping God. out of the jaw yeah. on yes. the floor. Arr, arr, arr. That's that's what we get here it's from that. President Medina. From the pre- yeah, from President Medea, we get a full, the chef comes out of the kitchen. It, it, He's going to be oh. crushed when he finds out that while he was yeah. reading that book, they got engaged. He's going to be just uh, just crushed. Yeah. Steam whistle comes out of his head. <laughs> Dana? <laughs> yeah, uh, Aaron pointed this out, but before she does meet the President of the United States, she cooked the whole meal and didn't know he was there, first of all. You need to know that. Second of all, she's like, I can't meet the president looking like this. Now, you would imagine, if you've not seen the movie, that she has like an apron on, like stuff in her hair, hairnet, hat. Flower on her like, face. Yeah, 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 like gloves. She has perfectly formed barrel curls on the side. <laughs> 
like para- just like framing her face, like bright orange sweater, no food on her, like perfect makeup. She's like, I can't meet the president like this. Don't make me meet the president. Don't make me meet the president. Um, when this guy uh, pulls over uh, the lead on her way out of town, he says, I'm just out here outside of my jurisdiction abusing my power as a policeman. <laughs> what girl could say no to that? So not only do they have a Blue Lives Matter, Thin Blue Line like thing in the movie, they also have him basically just say, yes, I'm abusing my power as a policeman for a love declaration is what happens in this movie. Mm. Um, there are so many things in this movie that you don't know are happening or haven't been set up and then they're just happening or they exist. Like for instance, the ghosts, we Mm -hmm. like, we don't know. We just think she's home to help at the Holly hotel. Then she's given this tour. And like you said, it's like halfway through the movie. It's a ghost tour. It's a ghost tour. We didn't know it was a ghost tour. And everyone on the tour is a, a, a local, a, a local from the town. Who's like, you know what we should do? It's December 23rd. (laughs) <laughs> ghost tour ghost tour actually it's december 20th it's december That's 20th oh yeah then which leads me to the next one which is this movie starts by saying december 20th and on december 20th uh holly or whatever her name is what's her name is in new kathy. york kathy she's in new york talking to her friend she gets on a plane she goes home gets pulled over by o- officer aaron eckhart she she then goes into town meets her parents gives uh uh tours gets talked into going out on a date. All of this happens in, and then it's 25 minutes into the movie. The screen goes black and it goes December 21st. All that happened in one day. What a day. What a day. What a packed day you had. And then on December 21st, she sends one text and makes one phone call. And then it's, the and then it's December 22nd. <laughs> well, then she went from New York to Michigan, so she gains a whole hour. She right, does right. gain an hour. But like, why waste the second day? If the first day is that packed, why not just put some of it in the next day? Like, I don't understand. The next, the next day lasts 10 seconds. Also, you just reminded me, part of the ghost tour is talking about how people can still smell the cigars. I'm like, the, not the lit ones. Not the, Yeah, no kidding. Um, on the ghost tour, she, the guy that used to run the place that's now a ghost is named Mr. Hurst. And she says, Mr. Hurst was the name of the ghost of Mr. Hurst. <laughs> and I, like, I spent too long. Like, I got in a real funk over here thinking that I was the dumb one. What? <laughs> so, Mr. Hurst, the ghost Mr. Hurst, of Mr. Hurst. God rest his soul, rest in peace. Obviously, we call his ghost Mr. Hurst. <laughs> what is, who is on first, people? M- Mr. Hurst, the ghost of Mr. Hurst? Mr. Hurst, the ghost of am Mr. I, Hurst. Am I like losing my oh, mind? Please, Mr. Hurst lives in Boca. Call me the ghost of Mr. Hurst. <laughs> Mr. Hurst, the ghost of Mr. The ghost of Mr. Hurst is my father. Yeah, um, yeah that was crazy. And I, you know, you guys are giving this movie a hard time, but it is a pretty exposition-heavy film that also contains a 30-minute first date montage. <laughs> I swear, when they go on this date and they play music as they walk down the street, it lasts the length of the birth of a nation. It is, <laughs> it is, it is an extensive, uncut montage of every second of film they salvaged from filming that scene. It is. Do in, you I, urinate more than once an hour? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen a bad Christmas movie? Try Borealis. I like it, it, not it's, recommended for people with night crimes. <laughs> yeah. Not recommended for people who aren't big on the police. Uh, we let's see what Don't else do I have? Wave. Um, it, she's supposed to fly in and then be at a restaurant uh, on on Christmas night, mm. and her flight is supposed to be in the morning. But on her way to the airport, when he pulls her over, it is pitch black. Yes, like dark, like the, it's like they're in Alaska. Like the everything is dark for like the all of Christmas day and night, which is one hundred percent crazy. They also pepper in late in this movie that she Kat, Kathy has a sister. Like out of nowhere, this dad's like, "Well, we have two daughters, and one of them stuck in Colorado in the snow." <laughs> what? Like they're, we don't they're planting sequels, Dan? Yeah, I, I like never. It didn't like. It, it's not mentioned. 
Not even like giving up. That's half. another scene with some insane audio because he's talking with the ghost and he's drinking oh, and he's yes. just dragging oh, the, the glass yeah. on the bar oh, and you just yeah. hear it the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Brian walking in with his squeaky shoes every day this week. <laughs> but and my last one is is that we hear a solo at the end of this movie of a public domain Christmas carol, and this poor mic and monitor and everything has been turned past eleven. Like, it is ringing, like, while we're listening to it. And clearly the people in the crowd don't have to listen Give to it. Give me high reverb all it, the way it up. It is, like, unbearable. And I can't imagine them watching this movie, like, a, a cut of it and not fixing that. Yeah. Like, just uh, quickly, just pop, just popping it down a little bit. There is a good performance in there. It's yeah, just at sing. a normal volume, I think yeah. it comes across a lot better. If you take out the feedback. Yeah, if you take out the feedback. feedback. Yeah, that's right. Uh, let's do uh, what? Prime time. I heard it was prime first. <laughs> Somebody in the chat said prime first. What? Really? Yeah. All right, prime time again. So they, li- they released both of these movies. <laughs> Uh, from the last couple of weeks, yeah. Our holiday slate for 2022. Um, Alonzo, what are you mm. still wondering about? Uh, I just wonder who is going to take care of the house full of kids that this policeman wants to have. Uh, because she clearly wants to have a career, if not writing for the New York Times, then being the chef for the Holly Hotel. Uh, and, yeah, his notion of, like, you know, all these... Moppets running around is going to be a little tricky, especially given what he's probably making as a deputy. So, yeah, I, I don't think anybody really thought that through, including the cop. Uh, that being, was my main one. Being a chef is way more like it takes Recruited. way more time and is way more stressful than being a uh, you guys have all seen food the bear, cook, right? I mean, come hey, on. Yeah, it's a lot of nights. It's like, hey, <laughs> just getting the kid. It's, she'll be fine. That's way like yeah. Just get look. You don't want to review like you don't want wasting your talent writing reviews critiques if for you the will. New York Times. New York yeah. Times. What are you a journalist? Ugh. You could be you could be cooking in Michigan. Yeah, yeah that's exactly right. That's <laughs> exactly no shade right. on Michigan, but I mean you know these I are mean, the choices we're giving. You got here. the head film critic like. Yes, shade on Michigan for this. Yes, shade on Michigan. I'm not, look, Michigan, I've never been. It looks beautiful. I've never been. I've been to the Detroit airport, so that's it. But, like, in the, like if you're a journalist that wants to, like, pursue journalism, like, yeah. Alonzo, if you're in Michigan working for the Detroit Free Press and, and the New York Times is like, you want to, like, A.O. Scott retired, you're going to be the, head, you know, head film review, whatever. Like, that is a step up. Like that's yeah. I mean that's like she has reached literally the pinnacle of her career, and yet it's meant to not mean anything because she's not back at home. Yeah. That's right. Um, all right, I just want to talk about a very specific thing that happens, and it's a text message that is sent, and we get to see the text messages in this movie with the bubbles, which was a nice touch. I like that. Um, she on more than one occasion, reminds her parents that she is uh, an adult mm-hmm. that you don't have to worry about. I think she says she's 35. Uh, 30. Maybe she a, just turned 30. It's, it's, a, it's a 51 out of 25 yeah. um, situation. <laughs> but she, after the first day and after she says, I'm not going to do this again, her parents tell her, I think you should give him another shot. And this is the text message that she sends him. It is this. My parents say, I'm giving you, the letter U, another chance. <laughs> what? Are you, are you an adult or are you not? That is a text that a child, like a teenager, my, my parents say I got to give you another chance. My parents say I need to apologize to you. <laughs> so I guess I got okay. to. Yeah. What was the, ch- how did that happen? Not a kicking dirt emoji. How, how, <laughs> my parents say I got to oh, give you no. another chance. I, apparently I got to say I'm sorry. It's not even like world. my parents, my parents encouraged me to like, to give this a shot. It's no, my parents say I'm giving you another chance. Yeah, that's weird. I will say that. Imagine getting that text and being like, no, I'm good. 
<laughs> I'm good, bro. <laughs> Never mind then. I, I think that goes on the list with ghosts and meta commentary by Christmas movies as things this movie hasn't earned because yeah. there is a way in the with the right kind of banter that you send that text and it's all the levels of irony and sarcasm and yet underlying sentiment yes. are expressed. Not here. I just want to know yeah. how that, no ha- like, what went into the decision to have that text written that way as if it was sent by a Because by a he, she knows this guy's down no matter what. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> e- even with that level of insult. Hey, you're in luck. I have no choice in the matter. My parents say, I'm giving you another chance. Well, good. And there's nothing. Grandma insists that we be together. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Because I'm hot. I think that's the grandma. Ugh. Grandma's very into him. <laughs> It's weird. Yeah. Uh, Dan? Um, I want I want to talk about the best friend of all time, not the one we have in Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> uh, I am a friend of God. Kathy's he calls me friend. friend in we uh Kathy's friend in New York uh is supposed to pick her up at the airport on Christmas morning. Wow. Um Kathy morning. decides to stay Night, whatever. <laughs> decides to stay in Holly. And doesn't tell her friend <laughs> that she doesn't need to be picked up in New York. So I'm going to go ahead and make it the worst of the three. And from a driving standpoint, let's say Newark. Let's say Newark. Sure. So Kathy's best friend is on the escalator. I don't know. In Newark, waiting for her to pick up her friend. She's driven out there. She's parked at Newark <laughs> on Christmas morning and, oh. and she gets a text from Kathy that says I, I, he's the one that's all it says and Kathy's I'm staying she's the one he's the one Kathy's yeah. friend's response isn't hey F you <laughs> <laughs> it isn't so you're not coming home hey I'm sending you could you Venmo me the $86 What's, for gas what is great parking? about this yeah it's it's just yes she finally did it. What's great about this is it's not when she decides to turn the car around no. to text oh, no. her friend. No, 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 no. I'm going to wait until after I the should have landed, have landed. Correct <laughs> to text you. Yes. I want to make sure that you're at the airport <laughs> on an escalator. <laughs> You've made a sign, you brought balloons. Right. Welcome home. This friend deserves a medal. She is excited. That's why for she's getting her own movie. Fire, find, yeah. Finding love more than she is upset about waking up on Christmas morning <laughs> and driving to Newark. Also, why would an adult in New York ask no. her adult friend to get her at the airport? No way. New Yorkers take a like, car. They Absolutely. Take a cab. There's a subway. There's uh, all yes. these other options. That, that's you don't do that to your worst enemy. No, no way. And Christmas. you're certainly not getting out of the car. If somebody's picking up the airport in New York, they're staying in the car. Exactly. They're not parking. You let me know when you get your bag, and I'll come. That's exactly around. right. That's right. She's getting a fireman in 2020. She deserves a fireman. Well, she's earned uh, it. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Sheesh. Uh, my mom said, "You're getting another chance." <laughs> 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 oh, we did, everybody. Congratulations. I can't wait to watch this movie again. What a blast. Uh, next week, we're heading uh, back to network television. Uh, another CBS movie. I think it's the last one from 2022 that we haven't seen. It's When Christmas Was Young. When Christmas Was Young. Is it time Ooh, travel, boy? I don't know. Ooh. I don't know. We'll find out. Christmas in July is in full swing, everybody. Uh, yeah. I just, I just, I'm just so happy it's finally here. I can't wait to dive into more Christmas movies with you and you and you and all of our friends here on Dyke to Hallmark. Until next time, may we be the first to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas! Deck the Hallmark's a Bramble Jam podcast is produced by Aaron Shea. What? For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com. For more information on the Deck the Hallmark family, you can go to bramblejamplus.com. Deck the Hallmark is presented by Philo TV. For a free trial of Philo, go to philo.tv slash dth. You're about to hear some ads that help keep the lights on here in the old studio. Thanks for listening or don't listen. It's really up to you at this point. It's at the end of the show. I mean, you're listening to me. Hi. But here they come. I promise they're coming. Yep. Here they are. Happy day.